Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Cloud Operations Spotlight. My name is Benjot Chinana. I'm one of the leads for Cloud Ops focused on monitoring. Hi, everyone. My name is Rami Shalom, and I'm a PM lead in Cloud Operations focusing on logging and APM. Today, we're going to talk about Cloud Operations in Google. We're going to recap about everything that we have done uh, in the past year. We're going to demonstrate the most exciting features so we'll be able to experience this uh, more uh, accurately. And then we're going to talk about our roadmap, the new exciting things we're going to work on in the next year, and some customer highlights, how they actually use the product and the solution. So what is Cloud Ops and what happened to Stackdriver? So we rebranded. And with this rebranding, we have done some significant changes in the product to justify this rebranding. So Cloud Operations is still a suite of products designed to monitor, troubleshoot, and operate your services at scale. Cloud Operations help developers and operators, so you guys, keep your applications fast and available. The suite includes three main products. First one is monitoring. Monitoring is the uh, framework to be able to monitor your metrics, dashboards, uptime checks, and alerts. Whereas logging is a platform that allows you to manage your logs, analyze them, and get the most value out of them. And then we have traces, which allows you to manage your trace. One more piece to, to mention here is that those products are part of a single suite that allow you to do cross signal correlation. Ranjot, why don't you tell us about how scalable this platform is? Yeah, you, you know, folks may be asking, like, what makes us so different from every other product out there? And look, these products were born from inside Google. So a lot of the capabilities you see here today were actually developed for Google by Google. And what we're doing is exposing those same capabilities to you, our customers. And so the scale at which Google operates, as you can imagine, is quite large. We've taken that same scalable backend infrastructure and we've now oriented that to you, our customers. So we can provide you the same planet level scale that we provide to our own websites, to our own capabilities and our own applications. You now, some of the some of the stats that might astound you about how much data we take in today, uh, 50 trillion point, metric points uh, in memory are stored for all the ingest uh, volume that comes in. And we've got over two and a half exabytes per month of logs that enter the system and that can be analyzed. So this just gives you an idea of the type of scale that, that we can operate at. Now, along with that scale, what we've been able to do is ensure that when you stand up your services on Google Cloud, that you don't have to put much effort into ensuring that logging and monitoring and our advanced observability capabilities are available on the first day you start up. So there's built-in capabilities for all of your Google Cloud services and zero config needed to get those up and running so that the first day that a new Google service comes up, the next Google Cloud offering, you'll have all the metrics and logs for all of those services available as soon as it is GA. Let's talk a little bit about what we've been doing since last year at Next 2019. We really took a focus on Cloud Ops around three big areas. The first was around enterprise readiness. We wanted to make sure that our capabilities allow for you, our customers, to comply with all of your corporate regulations and compliance rules that you need in order to make sure it fully integrates with the systems that you already have today. So whether it's providing a longer term retention for logs and metrics, or whether it's deeper integration into third-party systems, we provided a lot of the capabilities that make sure that you can tie this in to the systems that you already have and make that transition to the cloud that much easier. We focused on ease of use. We wanted to make sure that the products are easy and simple to use for even non-power users, for those that are using logs and metrics and traces for the first time. And so you'll see a lot of the work we've done to simplify the user interface and to make it easier to get to the root cause of what's going on in your systems. And lastly, we focused on GCP. We wanted to make sure that every service on GCPs, all the logs and the metrics that are necessary to troubleshoot what's going on with, with the infrastructure that you now rely on are available to you on day one. And so we deeply integrated with all of the G GCP services from BigQuery to Google Compute Engine to uh, GKE, our Kubernetes engine, 
and a variety of other services. So on day zero, all of those are, are ready and available for you. Let's look at one of those integrations we did for ease of use. We took the entire cloud monitoring console that was previously in a separate UI and a separate uh, browser. We, bring, we brought that into the Google Cloud Console in the same context as all the other services you use, Compute Engine, BigQuery, GKE. With that in-context capability, you now have full visibility to all of your metrics and we improved a number of the interfaces around cloud monitoring, so it's easier to get to your dashboards, to your alerts, and to your uptime checks from one single place. And you can very easily then switch back and forth between cloud monitoring and all the rest of your Google Cloud services. Rami, why don't you talk a little bit about some of the work we did in the log viewer as well? Thanks, Manjot. Similar to what we have done on the monitoring side, we have invested heavily in the log viewer. We actually rebuilt this product from the ground up uh, to optimize it for performance and responsiveness. So your experience with the new log viewer should be way better and easier to work with. We also invested in some key components that will allow you to better analyze your data, get the essence of what you're experiencing and really looking for in your logs uh, directly from uh, the UI that you have there. So we invested in the histogram that allows you to see the time uh, distribution of your logs. So we'd be able to see exactly when there is a spike of errors. We've invested in the log field explorer to allow you to see aggregation of your logs based on field values. So this gives you a highlight view of everything that happens there. We have invested in how streaming operates. We're gonna talk about this a bit later. We have invested in a query library that will allow you to uh, manage your queries because you want to repeat your work sometimes and get some recommendation about that. We have done a bunch of other things we're going to talk about in demos. Other than that, we also created a new log dashboard. This is a great example of how you do the how we do the integration between monitoring, logging, and traces. In this case, it's producing a dashboard that is focusing on logs inside the logging UI, but relying on the metrics that happen in cloud monitoring. Manjot, why don't you tell us about SLO monitoring? Yeah, SLO monitoring is a great new feature we've added to really help you reduce the signal to noise ratio. So as you add more and more signals, uh, whether it's metrics and logs from your from your existing workloads, it gets it gets harder and harder to really find the root cause of what's happening. And really what we want to do is ensure that our services are being measured by how our users are experiencing those services. Service level objectives is is focused on doing exactly that. It's ensuring that you look at the same measurements and experience it the same way as your users do by automatically ingesting the services that are created on your GKE uh, deployed applications, whether it be through GKE labels and namespaces, or if you're using our advanced capabilities with Istio and Antho Service Mesh, we automatically find those services and then you can quickly create availability and performance metrics uh, and collect those to create your service level indicators to which you can then apply an objective and a threshold that you can alert on. What this also does is allows you to see a single view of that service. So you can see all the entities that compose that service and all the signals related to those entities, the logs, the metrics, and the traces all in one place. And we give you that single pane of glass to ensure that you can troubleshoot that service and quickly get to resolution on any issue that you might be experiencing. Now, we've also made this easier for our system administrators and our IT operators who have to go through and instrument all of their applications and all of their uh, VMs to ensure they can collect those metrics. We provided this new uh, ops config agent where you can define the automation lifecycle for this agent itself and ensure that the right VMs get the right agents with the right versions and they're automatically installed. And that policy is enforced throughout all of your VM instances. And you see a sample policy command here that defines which, which VMs, in this case, all VMs, get installed agents that are particular to the logging and monitoring agents the versions of those agents, and you can decide whether those agents automatically upgrade when new versions are available. 
And then lastly, for our power users, we added the new metrics query language. This gives users who, who are really taking their metrics to a new level and looking to do much more complicated alerting and mathematical operations on time series data, provides them the ability to, to perform those operations by doing things like uh, allowing you to do ratios and time shift on your data to do month over month or year over year analysis, or in the ca case of ratios, to be able to define, say, certain new service level indicators for your service. It allows for complex grouping and filtering, so you can take that data and, and pivot it in a number of different ways, depending on the metric labels you have and the types of resources that you're looking at. So this really enables power users to find what they need within the time series data they get. And the more data you collect, the easier it is to, to use the metrics query language to look and sift through that data to find what you're looking for. Hi, we've also invested on the power in the power users in the logging framework. One notable feature, maybe looking tiny, but quite requested by our customers by you guys, is the ability to use regular expressions within the log query. So today it's available. You're able to use regular expressions to identify patterns and make your queries more specific and more efficient to find exactly what you're looking for. And we have seen tremendous traction with customers using that feature. Other than that, many of you have been asking us to add the streaming feature into the log viewer. So we didn't just do that. We actually decided to invest in it further. So we created a new API in the product that allows you to get a much better latency from 13 seconds waiting for logs. Now you're gonna wait for less than two seconds. The way it's done is that we have shortcutted some of the steps along the ingestion pipeline logs and get them straight to the UI for you to be able to ingest those logs and see them right in the UI. So you're not gonna wait for them when you're running your code. It's gonna appear as soon as the application generates them. The next one is log buckets. One of the key features that customers have been asking us is to manage the logs uh, in a way that fits their needs in a better way. More specifically, log buckets is a new construct that allows you to store the logs, first of all, in a centralized fashion. You can collect all the logs from all the projects that you have and put them in one bucket if you wish, in a way that will allow you to, to uh, centralize all your logs. However, buckets is also allowing you to do the, the other way around, which is basically decentralize everything. You may want to have a bucket or a scope of logs dedicated for application. So log buckets are going to give you that uh, enablement as well. Other than that, log buckets as a physical contract can be stored regionally, which means you can decide that a certain bucket is not gonna leave a certain region. That's good for compliance purposes in some regions, but it also is useful for the case of redundancy. You may want to have uh, fault tolerance between two different regions. So you can put the same data in two different buckets and uh, store it in two different regions. The last piece is that the log bucket will allow us also to, uh, to offer you granular permissions for those buckets. So you'd be able to decide which users can access which logs assigned in which bucket. And we actually intend to do more than that. We are going to introduce the concept of log views, which will allow you to get even more granular access control in the logs for in, in, in each and every bucket. The last piece I'm going to mention related to uh, to APM is cross signal correlation across traces, metrics, and logs. Right now, you'll be able to see that uh, we are going to be able to access metrics, sorry, traces, right from your monitoring uh, dashboards or right from your logs whenever they are available, and you're going to get. Um, a sense that this is actually available. You're going to get the signal that the trace is available, and you can click on it and see exactly the, the waterfall of the, of the latency that happens inside your application. And with that, why don't we go through a quick demo to show the main features that we are doing in the product. Welcome, everybody. In this demo, we will walk you through the new and the most exciting features in Google Cloud Operations we have been working on for the past year. As you will see, we have been working hard to improve your experience and productivity as you observe and troubleshoot your applications. We will start our journey in cloud monitoring and we'll focus our attention on services. In this page, you will notice a range of services. Some of them are automatically identified by the systems and others were defined by the users. 
Let's focus our attention on those services that look like that could deserve some attention. More specifically, let's focus our attention on ad service. This service appears to be in distress in the sense that it's not meeting our service level, level objective, and we want to take a closer look at what's happening. At the top of the page, you will notice the alert timeline uh, component. This component allows you to review all the alerts that have been fired for this service along this timeline and drill down as needed. Below the alert timeline, you will notice the SLO component. This component allows you to review SLOs that have been defined for this service. It also allows you to create a new SLO by choosing the metrics of your choice as well as the criteria of your choice. In this case, we can notice that the service, the ad service, is out of error budget, which means it deserves our attention and we need to drill down further to see what's going on. Below the SLO component, you will notice the key metrics component. This component presents to you the metrics that are collected for this service. You can review those metrics at multiple levels, uh, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, you can do it at the container, at the pod, or at the node level. These key metrics can offer valuable insights about what may be wrong with your service. So that could be a good starting point to further explore or troubleshoot your service. Below the metrics widget, you will notice the logs widget. This widget allows you to explore the logs that are produced by this service, which can provide valuable context related to every issue that this service is experiencing. For greater details and deeper analysis of those logs, you can choose to open the logs in the log viewer. We will begin our journey in cloud logging by presenting the key components on the page. The first one, is the log viewer or where the logs are actually presented. This is where you'll see all the logs that are collected by the system and you'll be able to browse through that. You will then notice the histogram, which gives you a time-based distribution of the logs that are presented below. Lastly, there is the log field explorer. This widget presents to you an aggregation view based on field values in the logs that appear in the log widget. To begin our troubleshooting journey, we will start with selecting the resource that is of interest to us based on the logs that we see. I'm interested in Kubernetes containers, so I'm gonna click that, and you will notice that this resource is now added to the query. Also, I'm interested in errors that are happening in my application, so I'm gonna click that as well. And you will notice that there is a cluster of errors that appear at different points in time along the last six hours. At this point, we may choose to narrow the results down further based on the time range that we are interested in the most. Or we can simply focus on the logs that appear on screen because the number is small enough. At this point, we can just get rid of everything else other than logs and focus just on the logs that appear on screen. Another option to reach this narrow set of results could be via the log dashboard. The log dashboard is a component that allows you to see an aggregation of logs over time based on specific resources and specific types of logs. On the left side, you'll see the overall logs that are generated with a resource. On the right side, you will notice the errors that are generated for this service. This dashboard allows you to click on one of those bars and view the logs that are related to that. What will happen is that we'll jump to the log viewer presenting the errors or the, the logs that are related to the specific bar that I selected. You probably noticed that up to this point, I didn't even interact with the query builder, which allows me to actually edit the specific text inside the query and construct it the way I want to. You can further adjust your query by either editing the text directly in the query builder and change any of the fields that appear there or use the menus to construct your query based on the resources, the log name, or the severity of the logs that you're interested in. You will also notice a new functionality that we have added to manage your queries. Beside the Query Builder, you will notice a query library that allows you to review your recent queries and relaunch them if you want to. 
Save queries, queries that you decided to save and share with other users in the project. And suggested queries, those are queries that we actually suggest to you based on our understanding of your logs. Last but not least, I would like to turn your attention to the streaming functionality in the Log Viewer. This feature allows you to visualize logs as they are being generated by the application. The delay time is seconds, which allows you to troubleshoot your applications way more efficiently. Thanks for listening. We will now go back to the presentation and continue our discussion, focusing on the roadmap for cloud operations. That was a great demo, Rami. Thanks for that. Let's now talk about what's coming next for cloud ops. We've got some exciting new features that we think will make it really easy for our users to now take advantage of all the great capabilities in our product suite. We'll start with simplified dashboard and alert creation. You know, we find that many users have a hard time getting to their first dashboard because they don't know what metrics to use. or They don't quite know how to visualize those metrics in a way that makes sense. So we provided a basic mode that allows you to get a guided prescriptive flow to deciding which metrics to choose using the most commonly uh, access metrics for your GCP services, and then providing recommendations for how to visualize those metrics in a chart that makes sense to you. We'll also provide the advanced capabilities so you can continue to use the dials and knobs to get all the right alignment and grouping and filtering that you need to, to get the most out of your data as you become more and more advanced on your usage of the dashboard capabilities. And of course, you'll have the query language to do even more complex queries and arithmetic operations that you can't do through the user interface. We provide a grid-based layout so you can quickly drag and drop your charts wherever you want to and make sure that the right charts get the right attention and they stay in the right place or they can get sized as big or as small as you need them to. And we've added additional chart types so you can use things like heat maps to find out where problems are in a very complicated metric series or bar charts, scorecards, and other text-based placeholders to make your charts work for you. We're also looking forward to providing additional multi-signal correlation using topology information. Today, we can take a look at all the microservices that you've got running in your GKE cluster as an example and map that out in this topology graph. That topology graph will give you a great sense of the dependency between your microservices and which service is communicating with which other service. Now that's great for configuration and for looking at static display, but what we'd really like to do is layer on additional information about latency, service uptime, and error rates so you can quickly diagnose and find the problems that matter between your microservices and as it gets more and more complicated across your, your real estate of that, your applications, we can use the topology graph to simplify where to look and how to find the right problem to solve for. And then with proactive alerts and remediation, we want to be able to really get the system to work for you instead of just working alongside you. So with automatic, automated alert creation, the system will recommend the types of alerts you should create for the GCP services that you have. So on day zero, you have the best practices configuration ready to go. You can, of course, configure those alerts in ways that make sense to you, but at least you provided the recommended way to look at a service that you may be looking at for the first time. With log-based alerts, you'll be able to quickly get notifications on events that happen inside your logs. So instead of having to turn those logs into metrics and then explore them through the Metrics Explorer, you can now just assign alerts based on patterns and combinations you see in the structure of the logs themselves. With alert remediation, we can now do typical workflow functions. So as an alert fires, wouldn't it be great if the system just handled some of the common issues for you? So when a, CPU, when a VM runs out of CPU or it runs out of disk, why not just resize the VM? If you have bad deployment in GKE and the application is continuing to to service and, th and throw errors, why not redeploy based on the last known good state of that application? Or 
something more complicated that you've already triaged and understand how to fix, you can write your own cloud function and execute that from the alerts themselves. And lastly, with anomaly-based alerting, we really want the system to work for you and really get ahead of problems before they become problems. So with anomaly-based alerting, we'll threshold or baseline the system and set automated thresholds for when we see the system deviating from normals that we are viewing year over year, month over month, or day over day. And this is leveraging all of the great machine learning capabilities inside of Google. Rami, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's happening on the log side of the house? Thanks, Manjot. Wow, you have a lot going on. Let's talk what's happening on the logging side then. So we will continue the effort of making the insight out of the blog more readily available for you to use. At this point, you know, it's more following your lead when it comes to uh, what logs you're looking for. Our plan forward is to drive those insights out of the box without you trying to figure out what's going on. So for instance, when we see a certain scope of logs in your log viewer, we will surface proactively the trends that are related to this. If there is, if there is a bunch of errors that you will want to be aware of or a resource that is an outstanding uh, resource, or if there is a field that we see that is uh, uh, providing a certain insight that we will want to surface to you, those are the types of things we're going to show you out of the box within cloud logging using visual uh, mechanisms to do that. Or maybe more importantly, one of the key investments that we have right now in cloud logging is our analytics. This is a smart analytics at cloud scale using SQL relying on BigQuery. So the idea is that first of all, we want to allow you to have a richer language to analyze your logs. In some cases, you will want to do more than just filtering of your logs. We want you to do aggregations and allow you to do more sophisticated uh, operations on your logs. For that, you will need SQL. We will use uh, BigQuery as a backend to be able to run uh, SQL operations in cloud logging in the context and all the power and visualization that we have in cloud logging. We will also allow you to use the same data in the logging that is uh, going to be useful for you as part of your BigQuery analysis. So for instance, if you want to do business analytics involving multiple repositories of data, you will be able to do this. So combining log data, for instance, with identities or combining log data with other parts of your uh, business data is going to be available inside BigQuery and seamlessly from cloud logging. Performance improvement rely on the fact that we will be able to use the BigQuery framework to do better indexing and uh, analysis of bigger chunks of data at faster rates. This is one of the things that BigQuery is really powerful at, and we want to make sure that we fully leverage that capability as part of our cloud logging uh, capabilities as well. Manjot, why don't you tell us about how customers are using our features? Yeah, it's, you know, it's great to have customers really tell the story because we as product managers, we of course love our products and we love building these capabilities, but really it's up to our customers to, to tell us whether these features make sense or don't make sense. So don't take our word for it. Hear their stories. They're all talking here at Cloud Next. So I'll call out a couple of customers here that we've been working closely with that are really taking advantage of some of our capabilities. With Equifax, Shopify, Wix, and Schlumberger, each have their own story of how they've leveraged parts of the Cloud Ops suite and are taking advantage of the capabilities we have today. So look for them in their respective sessions. And of course, there's a whole series of tracks and other sessions from which you can learn more about everything we've talked about in our Cloud Spotlight session today. So if you want more information or you want to hear directly from our customers and hear more about what your peers are doing in the industry, these are the tracks in which you can find more information between the infrastructure and app modernization tracks we think you'll find a ton of great information. And with that, we thank you for your time today, and we hope you get the most out of this session as well as the rest of the tracks through Cloud Next. Thank you, everyone, and thanks for staying with us.